Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here. So the 15 inch MacBook Pros can now be configured at the time of purchase with the new Vega GPUs. This one's running a Vega 20. And before I get into performance and stuff like that, I wanna talk about power consumption because this is very relevant when it comes to comparing performance of this device with anything else out there. MacBook Pros, including the 15 inch one, are powered by USB-C. The AC adapter they include in the box is an 87 watt adapter. It's not particularly big, but there's a limitation to this port. You can only feed 100 watts to it. So everyone wants to have that super thin laptop that's running like an RTX 2080 or something like that, but you can't power something like that with this. Everyone's big on USB-C charging because it's universal and awesome, but you can only feed so much power through that port. Something like the Razer Blade 15, a more powerful system, more powerful GPU, but it needs a significantly bigger AC adapter and it's a barrel plug does not take USB-C. All right, when Apple announced the Vega 20, they kind of did a pretty stealth announcement with it. Their website had some seemingly impressive graphs, but because it didn't have Adobe Premiere on those charts and I use Adobe Premiere as my regular video editing thing, I was not expecting very much from this device. Cause I'm like, why not put Premiere in there unless it was not a very impressive performance increase. But it's awesome. There's a significantly faster render time on the new Vega 20 compared to the Radeon 560X from three months ago. And it's not just render time, it's playback. The whole system feels significantly faster running this new Vega 20 GPU. When you run some other benchmarks, you can see some very significant improvements over the 560X. And the thing is that 560X was a GPU that had existed in their MacBooks since 2016. Like ever since they went to this new style, they've been using that kind of GPU. They bumped up the clock speed a little bit every year, but it was the same architecture. The new Vega 20 is completely new and it just, it finally feels appropriate for 2018 because that 560X from a few months ago was just so underpowered compared to all the other Windows laptops. And even as someone who prefers Mac OS, I just found myself using Windows laptops because that performance difference was way too big to ignore. Now, when it comes to gaming, I only played some games native to Mac OS. There's a bit of a bump from the 560X, but it's not massive, right? Keep in mind that most games are gonna run slower on Mac OS than they would on Windows, but the truth is any kind of comparable thin and light Windows gaming laptop is gonna crush the MacBook. The thermal performance is a little bit better. I'm noticing in Premiere for long renders, it's actually getting slightly lower temperatures. The fans aren't any louder, but the temperatures are a little bit lower. And I'm assuming it's from better efficiency on the GPU. So you have lower GPU temperatures, so a lower overall system temperature. Now, the bad thing about this new Vega 20 MacBook is the price. So this thing is now a $350 price increase if you want that upgrade. And this is on a device that's already very expensive. Also for people that owned the original 2018 MacBook Pro from like two or three months ago, the existence of this new Vega 20 GPU just, it hurts because that old MacBook is no longer, it's no longer the most powerful MacBook Pro on the market. So for people that depend on this stuff for work, it's just so tempting to pick this up. And really depending on what you do and your applications and what you plan on doing with it, it might be worth it. So here are my closing thoughts. If you're a professional and you use this for work, this is gonna make sense for the right application. If you're playing games, like you'd have to be a serious baller to buy something like this to play games. But if that's your jam, the, the performance increase on this in games is just not there. But the pricing is, um, it's not that I'm defending the pricing, it's just that you can't get anything like this in the Windows laptop market. You can't get a USB-C powered device that has this kind of performance in the package like this in any Windows laptop. It just doesn't exist. So the fact that they have a monopoly on a product like this allows Apple to charge whatever they want. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.